Okay, in this video I'm asking who would like to build a shortwave radio out of tubes. Anything from a simple one band shortwave receiver uh, to maybe even a uh, multi band. Depends on how far you want to go. I can provide the information and uh, we'll build it step by step. This would be the basic one band circuit that we're looking at right here and these will be using parts from let me move this and show you you're going to be looking for old CB radios that shows up in the camera yeah this happens to be an old Johnson Messenger 1 they refer to it as the white face Johnson Johnson 1 messenger there is a version of it that looks I've, I've already used this ch chassis but I have the faceplate this is called the 223 messenger 223 what they did is they just turned the chassis sideways and they gave it a 23 channel synthesizer circuit to where it would have 23 channels the other uh, Johnson Messenger one only had I think uh, five channel transmit and there was a black face uh, they called it a Johnson Messenger 2 it's the same pretty much the same layout channel selector volume squelch but it's black and these lights are like uh, behind the little black uh, perforated metal screen and then you have a switch to where there's a variable you can it'll receive all 23 channels and it'll transmit on I think five it might have had eight channels in it for transmit but it's the same chassis pull this off this is just a eBay find has all the tubes everything we need to build it uh, tube type shortwave receiver is in here the tubes has audio tubes has the IF transformers uh, the mixer tube has some coil forms and we don't need the crystals we'll use the power transformer so you think about what all this would cost just the power transformer alone might cost you fifty sixty dollars so and most of these go for around thirty nine forty forty five dollars with shipping so if you add all that up, it makes a pretty good, still a pretty good deal to just get a whole radio complete and then start taking it apart for the parts. But you want, if you can get one, get one that's pretty much complete. This one hasn't been messed with. It's just <laughs> severely dirty. Okay, that's the one. And the Messenger 2, this one kind of looks like the Messenger 2, but this is a business band version they call this the messenger 202 has a black face that might be too close for the camera but anyhow um, it's the same chassis uh, same circuitry pretty much except that it only had one channel transmit one channel receive because they're a business radio uh, I've did my first experiments with this one kind of playing around just to see if it was possible and this is the main tuning I've got this set up for the broadcast band works really nice and I can go all the way up I switch a tap on the coil and it can go into the 160 meter band and then over here I've made a BFO to where I can with CW I can bring in the CW note with the BFO so I know this concept works it's really slick and easy but we'll make a better looking chassis we won't we'll just use the parts I'll show you what, what what I have in mind here in just a minute but this is the 202 again this is uh, the black face looks similar uh, I think it's laid out a little different but pretty much the same radio the schematics as far as the layout of the schematics are really the, pretty much the same okay one other radio that you could use the 
parts from is a Courier 23 plus it's had a little kids artwork put on it but this is a an eBay find I think I watched this one for several weeks and it was like uh, $29 plus shipping um, but the essence of what I need is in here it had a power transformer it has the right tubes it has a 450 kc IF circuit and it has the transformers and everything that we'll need to make the uh, to make the shortwave receiver so if you could find one of these got it for a good deal grab it it's got all the parts you need power transformer is uh, all the right voltages okay another thing you'd look for is while you're at the while we're talking on parts uh, coming up here soon for me is my closest ham fest to me is uh, February 15th uh, Rick Real, just outside of Salem Oregon and if you are at a ham fest near you look around for junk like this grab it it'll probably be you know lucky if you can be get lucky you'll find one that's in their junk box they might have it for free or buy the whole box of stuff for maybe a dollar or so uh, this is a transfer the receiver section from an old Motorola FM uh, business band radio I'm not sure of the line I'm, I'm researching it uh, as I the closest I can come as they call it the uh, a T power it was a late 50s vintage but it had all the right tubes. It used a 6CB6, a 6BJ6. It has coils. And this stuff here is going to be valuable for when you want to wind your uh, antenna and your mixer coils uh, for your shortwave receiver. You're going to need these things. And every one of these little cans had one of these little coils stuck inside there like that. So you'll get a lot of that kind of parts. Uh, while you're at the ham fest look for stuff like this this is out of military equipment some sub chassis from military uh, test equipment and stuff had these kind of little coil forms they're nice because they have a threaded collar and a nut so all you need is you just drill a hole put it through there tighten the ring nut down and it holds the coil in place and it has an adjustable slug uh, other stuff to keep your eye out for tube sockets with shields you're gonna need and uh, if you use one of those Motorola things that I just showed you it'll have several of these on there uh, this is going to be important for your mixer stage your RF stage and uh, even the IF stages can use these and this will cost you quite a bit if you have to buy them brand new uh, off of eBay or something um, tools you can use step drills I prefer to use what's called a greenly punch to punch my holes for making tube socket holes and things these are some of the assorted sizes half inch five eighths and three quarter uh, those are probably about the most common you're gonna need for your tube sockets uh, like I say, a step drill from Harbor Freight would work just fine. Uh, these make a little bit cleaner hole. Uh, you just drill a hole to start with, assemble the punch into the hole, crank this down with a wrench, and it pops a nice, clean, sharp-edged hole. Really, really slick. It'll do it in aluminum, uh, copper-clad uh, circuit board, that kind of thing. All right, the chassis, some of the stuff we'll work with. This is what I build up for the audio amp. It uses a 12AX7 for preamp and a 6V6 audio output tube. A transformer, found it off of uh, eBay. These are a line matching transformer and it locks out if you get the right taps on it. You hook it up, I'll, I'll show you which one to get. and it uh, sounds really good gives you about 10 watts of audio output I've even run music through this and it sounds great 
little guy right there. Uh, we get real serious and you want to build a really top end good if you're really serious and you want to go for the better shortwave receiver. Uh, you get one of those Johnson chassis and get it all cleaned off. It will give you a template to where you can mount your uh, IF cans. And all I did before I started here was took this piece of copper circuit board. Once the chassis was cleaned, I just mounted it down on it with screws and went to the other side of the chassis and marked out my holes. Then took and drilled starting beginning holes and then with little rat tail files, a jeweler file, I eked out all those little holes for the IF transformers to sit in. Works really slick, gives you an easy place to you can solder anywhere you want, and all that is is just plain copper clad fiberglass circuit board. But that makes a really good chassis. And this then becomes a sub chassis that you'd mount in a larger chassis with your audio and your power supply and all that. Okay, uh, while you're at the swap meet, keep a lookout for, if you don't have one already, any of the early 60s to late 50s. I wouldn't go any later or earlier than, uh, oh, about 1957. Uh, be prior to 1957, they start, they're back to where the parts that they talk about are so hard to find. Uh, that they're just not really relevant. It's really hard to equate that older octal type stuff to the new uh, seven and nine pin miniature tubes that we use today. Uh, full of circuits, full of good reference material, and I'll be referencing uh, from time to time back to a circuit that I find in this book that's pretty good. The first quick chassis for the simple little one band receiver will just be on a little copper clad circuit board like this, real simple, easy to put together. This one will have a little panel that I haven't got assembled on it yet. I uh, just done that because I wanted to uh, have room to start drilling some holes. Once I get figured out where my holes are going to go, I'll, I'll mount that vertical panel and that'll be for my VFO dial and the switches and stuff. Okay, um, what I've started with playing around here, you're going to need something to figure out your coils with. And so the first project that I'll build, this is a VFO, uh, a little oscillator, and a buffer amplifier. And this just provides a signal source. This little circuit, I use a meter on here with one tube. Uh, I tie in a coil that I want to test and hook to this and I can sweep past a certain frequency that I think this coil might be at and then I'll get an indication on that meter to where the resonant point of that uh, coil is tuned for and if I want to move it I can just add or take off some turns to get it to the exact frequency. This device here will help you when you're wanting to go to for more than one band you're going to need something to figure out coils. Um, <clears throat> Heathkit made uh, something they called a Q meter and you can look it up I believe it was called a QM1 I'll show you the schematic for here for that in a minute but I'm going to redo this. This is just makes too much clutter and mess. What I'm going to go to, I've rethought this, and I can get everything to mount on this little chassis here. This meter will just go in here, and I'll have the VFO and switches. And this will all be on one little chassis. Uh, the power supply is separate, so I don't worry ever worry about making something big enough. I just make one power supply, and then I can use it for multiple things as as, as I need. <clears throat> that way I'm not having to build a power supply every time I want to put something together. <clears throat> okay. The tubes I'll be working with start with 
start off with here. <clears throat> now these first few tubes have the cathode hooked to pin 7. All the tubes I'm going to show you, they're all basically the same. They'll work with very minor circuit changes. So it just depends on what tubes you have on hand, uh, what you can use. This one's a 6AH6, cathode's on pin 7. 6AU6, same thing, cathode's on pin 7. All the rest of the pins, filament, screen, plate, everything else is the same. 6BA6, same thing, cathode on pin 7. Okay, and these next tubes, this, these are ca tubes with the cathode on pin 2. They'll work the same. Uh, screen, plate, filament, uh, input, the grid, everything's on the same pins. It's just that uh, pin 7 and pin 2 are swapped. And that's a 6BZ6. Here's a 6CB6, same thing, pin 2, suppressor grids on pin 7. A 6DT6, cathodes on pin 2, suppressor grid, pin 7. <clears throat> and here's another one, a 6BH6, cathode pin 2. Suppressor, pin 7. 6HZ6. Any of these should be pretty much out of the eye of the audio people to, <laughs> that makes all the other tubes so high priced. Everybody thinks they got to pay 50 and $60 for a special tube. These you can find for 2 $3, maybe 5 Here's a 6BJ6. Cathode pin 2, suppressor grid pin 7. And this is the only tube that's different out of that lot, but it's, it's important and it's special. It has its own use. It can't be substituted with any other tube. This is called a pentagrid converter. It has some more grids in it, and it's a mixer tube. This is going to be where you mix your local oscillator with your incoming signal to give yourself the IF frequency of 455 or whatever frequency you're going to choose for an output. But it's a converter or a mixer tube. And then of course the old favorite, the 6V6. This is the one you might have to struggle to find. These are getting kind of pricey but they're out there. Uh, I picked mine up for I think I had to pay ten dollars for it. Uh, they're getting a little pricey, but if you look around the ham fest, you might find them for as little as two dollars a piece. And this is your audio output for your shortwave receiver. Um, the circuit that I'm going to use for the VFO oscillator comes from a piece of military hardware called a T195 uh, military transmitter and they have got a very very simple easy to put together circuit and I've tested it out with the other tubes uh, just simply changing the uh, swapping the cathode to the suppressor see this one here has them both grounded so it doesn't matter on that one uh, this one the cathode is active it's in the tune circuit and uh, the suppressor on that one's grounded but the other tubes will work. You just have to swap the pins around to make them work. But it's a very stable, very uh, easy to build little circuit. Circuits are easy to find. This is example just off the internet. This is what part of the actual circuitry of the T195. I don't know if it shows up in the camera or not. This is a circuit uh, part of the manual the uh, maintenance manual that actually explains how this circuit works. So if you wanted to find that information you could go and research and the uh, maintenance manual for the T195 it's called a GRC19 radio set and the transmitter is the T195. 
there's a little more a little busier because it shows some more of the stuff going on but it operates with a voltage regulator tube an OA2 which provides 150 volts for the screen and the plates to work on and it keeps the oscillator from drifting uh, keeps it on frequency you know well plus or minus uh, your heat uh, it's going to drift a little bit until it gets warmed up. This is my circuit that I drew up because I didn't need all the more complicated let me show you what I got rid of. There's a lot of stuff on here that's really not needed. This is for just fine calibration of the transmitter, the military stuff. And I just simplified it <clears throat> to where you could find easily easy found parts instead of the coil being tuned I leave it just an air coil wound on something like this uh, with a 22 picofarad cap across the rest of the circuits pretty much the same voltage regulator tube same thing now I talked about the Heathkit QM1 this is those two little pieces things I showed you that where it gave me the idea to build that um, it was just easier to build it that way than try to build what they had. They used a 12 AT7 and some other stuff. They used a voltage regulator tube. And this circuit will find resonance and it'll even read a capacitor. And you could do that with the other one also. You just have to calibrate it. But that's where the idea for that came from. Okay, this is a schematic for the Messenger 202. In other words, if you couldn't find a Messenger 1 or a Johnson Messenger 2, uh, here's the 202. Pretty much the same. Here's the Messenger 2 schematic. Transmit and receive. Pretty much the same circuit. It's just on the Messenger 202. They only have one channel transmit and one channel receive. So it it's not so busy I mean you don't see the switch in there uh, schematic for the courier 23 plus and like I say the only really important thing for this one is your power transformer is going to be a, vo a transformer with the voltages you need the IF cans are going to be the the right IF for what we're going to use they're 455 KCIF and there's nothing real special about them uh, they're just either easy to hook up and use. They're pretty well marked. Uh, if you need to reference it, you can always find information on it. Okay, I think that's kind of the end. Anyhow, this is the back to the simplified little schematic that I was showing you. The BFO. This is a local oscillator. Here, it's the 6BE6. Uh, I'm just using it. Part of it is a local oscillator, uh, like a couple of the grid, and uh, just a simple version of it. You amplify the signal coming in the antenna, mix it with its internal oscillator, the six, this BE6. It provides you with your IF frequency, and then you amplify it once and twice, and then you output it to a audio detector and then this is that little audio circuit that I showed you with the 6v6 uh, and here's the BFO uh, so you can receive CW or sideband and I'll give you all that info on how to build all that as we go along uh, any of this information you want let me know uh, it's all in JPEG form I can email it to you <clears throat> give me a comment let me know if there's any interest in uh, building a tube type shortwave receiver and uh, uh, when you do that let me know what bands you might be interested in or what frequency range and I can kind of look that up uh, ahead of time and keep that in mind when I'm showing how to wind coils and stuff so let me know your thoughts and uh, this project I'll start it here just as, as soon as I can I've got uh, pretty much everything I need to get started uh, I just need to know if there's uh, uh, 
anybody interested in uh, in seeing this stuff built. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.